Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode eight of Andor. Last episode, Cassian has been arrested for nothing to do with anything that he's done in his past, just existing. <laughs> the irony of the situation, man. It's wild. On top of that, a whole bunch of things happening on the Coruscant side of things and the domino effect of just kind of their efforts and the way that the Empire is responding and reacting. Ooh, the all the ISB scenes in the last episode was a lot of fun. And I got to mention this now because I didn't at, at, at the time of the reaction, but Yaloran was in there. I didn't recognize him. Like, I do now. Like, I could see it now, but, like, because I don't watch these with the subtitles on because I don't like it interfering with the, the, re, the reference footage for the reaction and stuff like that. So, like... Oh, that was a wild reveal, man. We've seen so much of him in the Clone Wars, and... Ah. Oh, damn. There was such a good reaction that could have been there if I had the subtitles on, though. You know what? After that, we're just gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna see how this goes. Hopefully it's not gonna be too irritating uh, for the viewers if we change that up, but it's just... There's some things, man. There's some things that these things reveal. There's some things they spoil, too, to be fair. But I'm very curious to see how this all goes, though. Uh, now that the Empire has Cassian in their hands, will they find out the actual ties that he does have? Or what? I don't know, man. With that said, guys, we're going to go ahead and hop into this. So if you want to see the full length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gives you access as well. It is in watch along format, so you just need your own footage to sync up with the time code, send my reaction to the entire episode. You get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You also get, you also get to suggest and vote on what movies we react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage. I try to make it worth your while since you are going to have a way to support the channel, but of course, I know never can do that. And a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos, because it really does go a long way with helping us here on the YouTube side of things. And we're almost at 40K, so if you're new, if you're on the fence, if you've not hit that subscribe button, maybe now's the time. If you enjoy this reaction, I'd really appreciate it. And we got Tales of the Jedi coming real soon. Not here, but that's a surprise for another time. Hope you're all subscribed to The Real Rejects. <laughs> Anyway, guys, with that all said and out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and hop into episode eight. Narkina 5. Here we go. Bell Savas. <laughs> Dividing them up on what prison they're going to for hold up. Oh, hey, that's uh, Daedra's assistant. Ooh. Oh, that's an interesting tie. I'm Lieutenant Ed Ramiro. I'm the ISB supervisor for the Morlana sector. What happened to Lieutenant Bluffin? I lost the questions. <laughs> Both had our mornings interrupted because you keep submitting requests to the Bureau of Standards Data Center looking for Cassian Andor. You've claimed he was a missing fuel specialist. An oh, great. Engineer. That poking around is going to send out some flags, I'm sure. What are you doing, Mr. Khan? Cassian Andor is a murderer and a threat to the Empire. I have been trying with the limited tools available to find him. Mm. You have engaged the curiosity of the ISB. Now, is there anything you'd care to tell me before I waste more of my time figuring out what it is you are up to? I'm just trying to clear my name. One would think you'd want to leave Ferex as far behind as possible. One would be wrong. <laughs> Tell me, what's not in Lieutenant Blevins report that I need to know? I have no idea. I wasn't allowed to see the report. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's some information that she didn't have. Give him Blevins report, let him read it, keep him in the poor days. We have time. Hell yeah. I don't know why I'm like rooting for that. 
I don't know, man. So there's something about the ISB situation that's just got me hooked, and I like seeing this, like, flesh out their tactics and the whole situation. Like, I shouldn't want them to find anything about Cassian, but, like, it's just so intriguing. Oh, wow. It's like the raft. There's a bunch of them. Oh, <laughs> Full planetary com net, full garrison tech package, series nine spectrum surveillance, local agent funding. Mm. Troy. Supervisor Mero has convinced me that this Axis has been nimble in spreading his activities across the galaxy. And no, we don't know who he is, nor do we know the scope of our problem. The little we are all... I love it. He's backing her now, man. He's so. Barracks I love this insane. turn of events, dude. It's the first one he's made. Drill down is exactly what I want to do, sir. Drill down, find Andor, and get a hunt started. It's so funny because they already have him. <laughs> but just under a completely different name. I wonder if it's just gonna go under the radar again, just another bureaucratical error that they they'll that'll just kind of like be or indicate their downfall a little bit. I like how they put an effort in like mentioning that a lot of these things went unreported because people are afraid to just report this shit. Stolen because of the the consequences not only to the empirical record itself, but for what consequences might come with that. Welcome to Narkina 5. This is an Imperial factory facility. You've all been assessed as labor worthy. Mm. Be surprised by the calm, sanitary conditions and our minimally invasive enforcement techniques. Hmm. I'm sure some, if not all of you, are wondering how we risk standing before you with our weapons. It's a potent question. And hopefully one you won't need to have answered very often, but... Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Electric floors? Ah, the, the boots help, man. That's why they're wearing them, man. Oh, my God. Our floors are tungsten steel. Do your time productively. Keep to your lane, and this needn't be more than a memory. Good luck to you. Wow. The way everybody's bodies just react to that, dude, it, it made me feel it. Obviously had an organized local cadre of accomplices. None of that is here. Mm. I will inform the Bureau of Standards that you were of service to the Empire today. Mm. He needs more than that. <laughs> I saw the double murder and found the killer in two days. It was overly ambitious, yes, but time was slipping away and the opportunity was real. Service to the Empire. You just said it. Can one ever be too aggressive in preserving order? I wish you luck. I'm running late. It's clear you need Andor in order to find his partner. It's also clear that whatever this is is more important than the death of two corporate security guards. It could be a valuable asset going forward. Dude. I see alarm. Get him in the ISB. Forget this happened. God damn it. <laughs> Again, why am I like... Why am I rooting for him right now? I guess I'm just like so like... I feel bad for just how discarded and beaten he's been. For just trying to... Do his job. And, the, and he's just been nothing but punished for it. And then he's got a shitty home life. I don't know, man. Damn it. Anyway. Is that the fucking <laughs> master control program? Are we in Tron? That's what it sounded like, man. <laughs> A new recruit 
is a tough case, but I want him treated in the usual manner. This is Unit 52D. Level 5, room 2. The D is for day shift. Seven levels of factory, seven rooms per level, seven tables per room, seven men each table. My name is Keith. Dude, I thought I was. <laughs> In this room answer to me name holy yeah. shit andy goddamn circus you're mine now Off program. man i've been listening to his narration of the hobbit so like when i heard him before i could see him i was like oh ah! <laughs> i have 249 days left of my sentence i have a free hand in how i run this room I'm used to seeing my room in the top three on the level. Don't ever slow up my line. Sounds like uh, some supervisors I've had in my time. <laughs> Not for me. No, I'll have hers. What in the world? Like it. Oh, it's just better at pretending. Well, that I find hard to believe. So, the evening's agenda? I need votes to store the Emperor's latest overreach. Okay. Mon is working. Well, there's much to be done. <laughs> no, you're on the menu tonight, eh? The senator is pitching politics, not charity. Saving the empire from the emperor. I guess you could kind of see why uh, the emperor is so dead set on dissolving the Senate once we get to a new hope. You know, he finally achieves it then. It's interesting how it's persisted this long. Routines are frustrating. Yes, we agree. Hmm. Too easy for vote. <laughs> yes, overreactive. Perhaps understatement. We know what too little looks like. Surveillance and prosecution without limit. You're doing nothing wrong. What is there to fear? Well, I'm fearing your definition of wrong. These are dangerous times. Dangerous times. Are they not? Do you feel under threat? Personally, here, yes. I'm at great risk of ingesting too much of this nourishing Chandrillon hospitality. I love that. Just these subtle little hints and clues to building out the the state of things. You see the white lights? It's the floor. White is cold, red is hot. The white lights start flashing, you've got seven seconds to get to your cell. Sensors in the floor, two men in one cell. It's an instant fry. Pull out! Mm. You don't walk in your sleep, do you? What? You'll find out. <laughs> Step out of your cell. I guess that's why he was mentioning, hope you don't sleepwalk. Because you don't want to be stepping out of your... Z get, get in your pod. I like how you can always see Cassian observing scanning and taking things in in any new situation or environment he's in just trying to like process everything calculate what he can memorize what he can to help try to you know not keep him down all these little details he's noticing picking up on i think he's getting a little sus I think her daughter is too, but I think it's for different reasons than her actual activity and motive. Thirty shifts later. Your breathing sounds weak. You got dizzy again. Mm. What have you done now? Apparently, I'm throwing a party. <laughs> the boys had to carry you back here. Ooh, it travels fast. She fell. What was she doing by the hotel? She wanted to see if the tunnel under the hotel was still open. Why? Mm. So the rebellion can sneak in and take them by surprise. Mm. There's a room to rent around the corner. They have a sign up. Can't just stay here. I can. Who would you say you are? I'm a mirror, Phil. You 
love me because I show you what you need to see. Thank you. Sure. I hope they don't hurt. Man, I hope they don't fuck with Brasso or Bix. I need to look for something in the back. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Mm. It's been up for a while. I took him on the farm door. Was I insane? You were desperate for Aldani to work, and it did. And we'll find him, just not like this. I'm not slipping, Leia. I've just been hiding for too long. It's all different now. We're going out. Vulnerability is inevitable. I'm not sleeping. I know. Mm. I just need you to wake up. There's a lot to do. Shut it down. Damn. Causing a stir and abandoning the people. They lit a fire under. Rerouting Set Romilo. Hmm. Uh. Dude, you okay? Like, is it a lethal shock? When it's red? Damn. Damn. Uh, what's going on? No, wait. Did they detect the outgoing signal? That's your name, isn't it? If not the resemblance, well, it's striking. Get this obese run. Why why did her name come up? God <laughs> Segra Milo. Oh hello. The garrison at Aldani. That Yo! I was just about to ask you the same thing. Oppression breeds rebellion. Krieger needs air support. I'm not for hire. Think of it. Think of Spellhouse in flames. Neither of you could do it on your own, but together. Krieger's a separatist. My pays a neo Republican. The Gorman Front. The Partisan Alliance. Sectorists. Human cultists. Galaxy partitionists. They're lost. All of them lost. I am the only one with clarity of purpose. <laughs> so he says. Well, anarchy is a seductive concept. A bit of a luxury, I'd argue, to a man who's hiding in cold caves and begging for spare parts. Ooh. Damn, man. It's always fun seeing Saw pop up. Would you like us to clear the room? to see him what are you doing get him out of here quickly you two with me <laughs> now. Hi. Hey. i like that they that showmanship that they had for that Oh wow. I really like this episode, man. So this 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 arc, this batch, I imagine's got to be a prison break. Maybe. I don't know. This didn't really set us up for what comes next like some of the other ones had. So I'm not really sure. I wonder if he'll who knows, the prison break could be the the final run. So the ISB is sniffing down that trail, man. It's led them to Cyril and Cyril, again, has had this fire lit under him. Actually, he's he's never let it die out. Like, he's been trying to keep pushing to clear his name, filing these reports, making himself an annoyance to the Empire. 
by his persistence. But it's a lot of it, it's really interesting seeing that fame that flame get fanned by him and the kind of noise he's making, the way the ISB is kind of treating him with all that. And I I'm very curious to see really where his arc goes. I like that Deidre is leading the charge on this whole thing and sniffing up these trails. I just love seeing like the investigation and how it's unfolding. And they're cracking down on Ferrix in the hopes that Cassian will show his head again. And much like the ISB, so is uh, uh, Luthen's people with Vel and Cinta. They're also on Ferrix hoping that he'll pop up. Everybody is just hanging out on Ferrix hoping Cassian will show his hand and, you know, pop back on everybody's radar. But unbeknownst to everybody, Cassian's up on some prison planet with the Empire already. So, like, clearly the Empire doesn't have some facial recognition system in play. I know they do. At least by the Mandal like the Mandalorian, they have some uh some type of recognition set up in the in in their security but at this point maybe they don't it's, they have his image but yeah man this factory like i got i'm not going to lie i i mean i've never been but like it this seems like not a bad deal they could definitely be worse for cassian is basically just being like eat, breathing, and sleeping, being at work. But like, it seems like they gave, they give them as much food as they want, drink as they want, whatever. But and they earn more if they perform well. Uh, I don't know. Andy Circus popping up as his supervisor for this sector. A lot of fun little el elements and details in here. And again, like these subtle ways that Cassian builds out his character, the way that uh, Diego Luna plays him is just so reserved, but there's so much nuance happening in the performance and every detail. Like you can just see Diego like playing this character that is processing all of these cues, all of these details, taking in his environment, the situation, the timing, the structure, the people, the process. And all of that, you can see him analyzing throughout the entire thing. Uh, it's really interesting. And then just Ma Mothma continuing to navigate the political sphere, hearing about the Emperor and how Palpatine is like pushing these directives. And, you know, they see it as like, you know, it, it's got some people riled up and afraid, you know, it's like, what does public safety mean to him? Like they even call him out. He's like, has a tendency to overreact and overstep in a lot of ways. So it just, again, shows that right now, because he's trying to keep these systems in play in some vain attempt to save face or keep things, keep these people satiated with how things have been, Again, the slow, encroaching, closing fist of the Empire, like it's these subtle, small, gradual ways that things are changing that allow these other larger swaths to go unnoticed by the majority, it seems, is these things like we see them kind of, uh, you know, having looming over their heads here that these, these senators at least are aware of it and somewhat fearful of it. And you can see Mon Mothma navigating this whole thing you know, these little moments she shares with her husband, with her daughter, with Tay, and these other people floating around in this same sphere. It's just really intriguing to see, like, this side of the coin and the way they talk about the way the Empire's functioning. It's just really interesting. Um, and then back on Ferex, Marva's sick. She's still tr going out of her way, getting herself hurt, you know, at her age and at her health and, you know, trying to push and fight uh, as much as he can, like, sniff it around the old hotel, see if the old, like, back doors and secret entrances still work just in case the Rebel Alliance wants to come in and, well, they're not the Alliance yet, the, uh, the Rebels, a group of Rebels, whoever they might be, has access to the hotel, got herself in trouble there, you know, and now Bix and Brasso, after she called out and radioed out at Pax shop for Luthen's aid, 
tripped their sensors because especially I'm sure they're tightening down on communications, monitoring and everything with the ISB clenching that fist around Ferex right now with Daedra actually being there herself. Um, with it being her sector now, now that she's taking it over from Blevin. Um, it's really interesting to see how that's playing out. And then we have Clea uh, calling out Luthen on being a little sloppy here and there or getting nervous or shaky or whatever. But it does reinform that she was, they both do want, in fact, to find Cassian and eliminate him as an issue. There's like some, there's, there's some reluctancy going on right now. And I think the part of that is because he's like, okay, we started the flame. Now we got to bring things together. So he's trying to unite these broken, severed, independent factions, which is, we see him going out to Saw, trying to barter, bringing Saw in to cooperate with another group, another person, to make another huge hit against the Empire. But, of course, Saw doesn't really play well with others. He's a very, even into the deeper ports of the uh, Rebel Alliance, still is more of an independent rogue group that they they really kind of keep at a distance because of his extremist methods. And we kind of see that evidented here um, with Luthen trying to like barter him in and buy him in a way with these free parts if he were to cooperate with another. But that didn't go the way Luthen had hoped. And I, I, I'm very curious. I want to know more about Luthen and his 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 ideals. Like I even saw was like, I don't know you. I know where all these other people stand, you know, the things they believe in or where they come from and all that. These other groups that he's, uh, l would resent working with despite having a common cause right now. And I like that you mentioned separatists cause he would have a very, very intimate, uh, issue with that. And then Luthen's like, I'm just a coward. I'm afraid of where things will go if we get cross that point of no return with the Empire and there's nothing we can do if we let them get too powerful. That There's got to be a deeper pathos than that. Vel is wavering on the wake of everything that happened on Aldani in a way, or I don't know, the risks, what she's being asked to do. It's not setting right with her. As we saw, too, on the Aldani mission, I think she's got a little bit more of a conscience than she lets on. Senta, however, she's like, mission. <laughs> Tell it to her how it is, regardless of the situation. And it's kind of interesting. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm curious to see where their storyline goes. Uh, and how Cassian gets himself out of this situation. How he gets into better favor with these rebels and out of their crosshairs. That's another thing. I think he's just going to, he's going to, his resilience and his resourcefulness is going to get him into a better standing where they're like, okay, it's going to be in, it's having him around will be invaluable. We need him regardless of what he knows, what he has, what he, he can do. You know, it's like Luthen said, like he, he's a wasted asset if he goes anywhere else when he met him, even though that was him, I think, trying to like coax Andor into joining his team as a fallback to ensure the success of it. I, in the end, I think it's going to Luthen more than he thought at the time is going to find that to be true. Luthen's getting a little shaken up with everything, a little itchy, a little antsy. And like he told Clea, he's like, I'm, I'm just tired of hiding. You know, we need to make noise. But we also have to continue to cover our tracks. And he shuts down the Ferrex connection, leaving them completely on their own. Also showing just the muddy, grody side of uh, the rebellion here, especially at least in this pocket where they like, all right, we rebelled, we lit a fire, but we, we are completely abandoning the people we're doing this for in the wake of our actions. But guys, with that said, what'd you all think? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Remember, you can check out the full-length reaction on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gives you access as well. Speaking of before we go, I want to shout out to Channel Ed. This is Manny Sherrett, Ryan, Karen, Philly Vane, Yori, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Raven McCann, Status Alive, Jeffrey Hale, and M. Sephiroth. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this episode, guys. I'll see you all next week with episode 9. May the Force be with you. Always.
Take care, everybody.